Hi, uh, welcome to today's video and I'm really pleased to be able to say I've received the Prusa Box spool tank. So I'm going to do an unboxing and actually build the spool tank hopefully all in this one video. Uh, we'll see how we go. So the spool tank will be sitting on the top of the Prusa Box. So let's have a look and see what's in the box. Right, let's uh, open the box up. Okay, so the usual high quality packing from the uh, Prusa Box team with all these uh, foam edgings. So I'm just going to take this out and lay it on the table. So there we go all the parts. Let's take the uh, protection off. See what we have. Uh, one part. Bit of packing. A, oh. Something very important, some skittles, very nice little touch there. Ah, the PTFE tube that we will need later on. Uh, and quite a few nuts and bolts by the looks of things. And what do we have here? This looks like the sides, I would guess. All wrapped in protection uh, for until you actually want to rip that protection off. Now this particular kit has the uh, sealing kit as well so we have some foam to be able to seal it so I'll be looking at those instructions. And we've got ah, here our two very light uh, rods, I guess for the filament rolls perhaps, and we have, what do we have here? I think this is the back and we've got the plexiglass for the front and I'm guessing that may be the top so all, all the parts so I'll now have a look at the instructions and see where we can start so before I start I just want to point out the various parts that you need to print they're all available on the Prusa Box uh, website and I'll, I'll put a link to that below just in case uh, you're not aware so we've got various things here, um, the spool holder parts, uh, stands between the enclosure and the spool tank, the feed there, uh, various corners and where the PTFE tube will connect to the filament rolls. So they do take a little while to print. Um, I actually started to run, run out of my main blue colour so I've gone for a, a grey on some of the parts. So that's what you need to print and we'll now go on to print the, or build the uh, main shell of the spool tank. So the first section and I'm actually looking at my phone uh, while I'm doing this to see what I need to do, I've got to follow the instructions. Uh, We've got four top corner pieces, uh, four bottom corner pieces, four feet, and we're going to use the uh, top, the bottom, the bottom's one with the holes in, and the two sides. Uh, but before we even do that, 
I'm going to rip off all of the covering uh, which will take a few minutes because based on my Prusa box uh, experience the the covering for the stainless steel uh, is quite um, it adheres very well to it so I don't want to embarrass myself by struggling to take it off so the next time you see this it will be ready to use so to start with we've got four bottom corners and the base which has got all the holes in and we have to attach six M4 nuts into the six holes here on each one so I'll just do the first one if I can open the bag So that's all six nuts in. I did indeed use this trick with the M4 bolt, um, particularly on these lower ones. Just pop the bolt through if the nuts at the top and just use your Allen key. And an Allen key is not provided, so you need to use an Allen key of your own. You probably will have one from your Prusa anyway. So pop the bolt through, nut on the top, and just turn to, to draw the nut into the tight recess. So I'm going to repeat that on each corner now, and the corners will just sit like this, and then we can get the uh, corners in. So all four corners now have six nuts. Then on each corner, we have to use the M4 bolts and for two of those apparently we have to just secure and let's see if that will go through looks like it's going through yep yeah. so one on one side and one here where the holes are I will redo all of these uh, tighter later on. So two screws in each one. Right, all four corners are in, uh, secured with two screws, two bolts I should say. Now we have to do the feet, so these parts, and again, you've, you've got a little square here and hopefully that can line up just in that recess and we use uh, a couple of bolts and there we have all four feet completed it's looking really good Okay, next is the top and we're going to repeat the process using the top corners which are triangular for the top and inserting four of the hexagonal M4 nuts, two into these two recesses by the looks of it and two into these holes here. So I'll just pop those in. And just be aware when you're putting the corner in, you can't just push it in, you just have to raise it a little bit and it will slot in while still keeping those nuts inside, stopping them dropping out. And indeed the instruction just does say pop in a couple of bolts, which I'm going to actually do now. Well, to get that second bolt in I ended up having to turn the lid upside down uh, because the bolt is quite slack in that particular hole and it was sitting about two mil too low turning it upside down 
put it into alignment so if you do struggle that may be something that you need to do so now I'm ready to carry on doing all of the other corners okay so in the end I found it easier to have it this way just slot it in rather than having it upside down uh, the, the bolts seem to go into the nuts much easier that way Right, the sides are the next part that we're going to attach to the lid. Uh, one important thing in the instructions is to make sure uh, that these do go um, a, a correct and incorrect way. So you need to make sure the holes here, there's only one hole, no hole on that side, only a hole here. Make sure that hole is at the back. You think which is the front and the back. There's a single hole at the back there on the lid so that indicates the back so I make sure that this is also at the back and these should fit on just really like uh, I would say the, the normal Prusa box fittings let's have a look I would hope that that will uh, fit in There we go, that goes with a click and probably a little press to make sure it's firmly in. There we go. And there we have the sides and the top all fixed together and we're ready for the next stage. Okay, the very final step, attaching the top to the base. Remember these holes here are for the front. You've got two holes here that are part of the back, along with the three holes at the back of the lid. Remember, we had one, two, three holes at the back. So in theory, this should fit. And just make sure that you pull out these little barbs on the outside as you're popping it down and you just need to fettle it down very slowly perhaps either side and make sure you do it on a work surface that you don't mind getting scratched because mine's got quite scratched just doing this So those are on the outside, those barbs, and they sh when they're in properly they should be completely flush, including the plastic just in this corner here. And those have all slotted in very nicely. That's really good. So two bolts in each of the corners and that should be it. There we have the first part of the instructions which is the frame. Now if you've bought the sealing kit and look, which is a spool sack tank sealing kit here there's the kit. This is an option uh, which I have got. I'm going to follow the instructions and install uh, some aluminium tape and it looks like we've got some perhaps some double sided uh, foam type material yeah so I'm going to install that now so for the ceiling kit uh, we're just initially going to deal with the four aluminium strips that basically seal uh, the gap between the side and the main part base or lid. Uh, there's two shapes, two top and two bottom. Uh, the top shape has uh, a chamfered edge, uh, the bottom one has this cut out here. So we just apparently have to trace 
Uh, so this is going to be have to cut out there and then it looks like it goes there to there so very roughly just simply like that and do the same on this end and on this one I've got, still got to cut it to size on that end but on this end uh, we are basically just going across there So I've got four aluminium strips now, two with rectangular cutouts, two with chamfered. So we're going to use one of each. Uh, the first one, this may be difficult to show, but we'll be going in there. And the second one, which will be going against the lid, and it's chamfered will be going in there. I may just have to trim it a little bit more, I think, just so that it fits exact. So I'm going to stick those in now. That's the uh, tape, sealing tape completed. Uh, the templates were perfect from Prusa Box. The most difficult part was just separating the backing from the actual tape. One tip which Prusa Box do mention is that only take a little bit of the backing away from the tape and start and then gradually pull the backing away. Uh, the tape does like to curl back on itself and once it does that and stuck to itself it's very difficult to get it undone because it's very very thin tape and you could destroy it. Right so that means that this is now finished. There we have the basic structure and we're going to move on to part two.